So hopefully this gives you an idea of the bigger picture, of what the situation really is and how we can go ahead to implement this. I'm joined uh, by Zoom uh, by Dr. Bernard Taylor. He's senior pastor, Destiny Empowerment Chapel International. He's decided not to resume church services, even though the restrictions have been lifted. And as you heard the Christian Council say, churches should not rush into congregating if they are genuinely not ready. Um, sir, thank you very much for your time this afternoon. Why have you decided not to open up your church uh, this Sunday? Uh, I believe we all have reason to doubt that there is always a human responsibility that comes in partnership with God. And globally, we look at what is going on. Uh, we Africans, I think mostly we have the proclivity to downplay wisdom with spirituality. And to be very... to take precaution church will always be there the church building is has not departed it's going to be there for ages we were born into church we came to meet church and church will be there for us so i want all Ghanaians to understand that this pandemic is more serious than we think i'm speaking to you in atlanta georgia i see the news around the world and in ghana some some folks are taking things for granted this is more serious than we think so let's all take precautions. When you look at Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 15 to 20, the Bible says, I have set before you life and death. That's a human responsibility. Choose life, right? God, God reiterated in verse 19 of Deuteronomy 30. He says that this day I call heaven and the earth as witness against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and curses. Now choose life so that you and your children may live. So this is just wisdom. Let's take our time. Let's read the system. Let's study how we're going to make things right. And at the, at the end of the day, we'll all have victory. People that we meet and encounter, I, I stated in my press release that there are many people that comes to our churches from varied and variegated backgrounds. We never can tell what someone picked up on the road. And we cannot uh, compromise the life of our little ones. And somebody who is so innocent will come in contact with a virus and we destroy destinies. So to me as a pastor, this is my perspective. I want our church and our members to take their time. We want to uh, read all that we need to read, study the system. We want to take precautions. And at the right time, by the special grace of God, we we'll all gather back in church. If, uh, for lack of a better expression, that you're getting uh, in Atlanta, because of course in the United States, the situation is more dire than it is here in Ghana. Globally. It's not only in America. Globally. But if you want to compare what ha what's happening in the United States, the number of deaths, and you want to compare that to Ghana, the United States of, uh, of America is way ahead uh, in terms of the, the uh, you know, uh, the, the, how difficult the situation is, that many more people are dying. And so I'm just wondering if that is informing your decision. Not at all. Mm. Uh, you, when I bear witness that even when the president uh, placed uh, the restrictions that we should be quarantined. You saw the number of people on the streets. Up to today, the average Ghanaian doesn't even believe that coronavirus exists. You know, you, know, you know better than I do. People are more ignorant than being enlightened about the death ratio that is going on globally. We, can't, we, we have only one life to live. We can't play chess with our lives. We have to take precaution. Mm. Ghanaians be informed about this coronavirus. We have to be careful. This thing is more little horrific than we think, and we can't use religiosity uh, over, over wisdom. This is common sense, and this is wisdom. We need to choose life. Does that, does, that, that, does, that, does that seek to suggest that those who are choosing to open up are not exhibiting um, wisdom? They're not choosing life, you think? I'm speaking from my perspective, ma'am. Yeah. There's right. nothing wrong in opening the church, but I think our church is not ready. And also, I believe beyond every reasonable doubt that the nation is not ready.
the nation is not yeah. ready. I'll just bring in uh, Pastor Ransford Obey, who is the chairperson of the Kumasi Ministers Fellowship, also joining us in this conversation. Uh, Pastor Ransford, thank you for your time this afternoon. Your church mm. actually started preparations already uh, ahead of the announcement um, of the ease in restrictions. Did you see this coming? Yeah, y yes, no, no. Uh, what happened is that, you know, uh, if you are in anticipation for something, even the Bible tells us that you need to prepare ahead of time. That is why I felt it was very important as a leader of, uh, of a movement, I needed to prepare and let my people instruct them how to prepare for the reopening. So you, you, you indeed prepared and it's been lifted. I'm, I'm speaking to also uh, another uh, a man of God, Bernard Taylor, who says that from his perspective, first of all, his church is not ready, but he genuinely thinks that this country is not ready for mass congregations. I, I, I don't think we can generalize it like that. It's like uh, you have uh, restaurants. There are some restaurants that... Uh, can comply to the rules. There are some restaurants that will not comply to the rules. So because of that, should you shut all restaurants? No. I, I, yes, some may not be prepared. There are even environment and the, the place where they meet may not be conducive. But that does not mean that every church is not prepared. Right. So you, 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 you see the, number, the numbers go up. I think that that's where the perspective that people come from. The numbers have gone up. We're above 8,000 at the moment. Uh, yes. 36 people have died. And although the rate of mortality is not as you know, rapid as it is elsewhere, we have seen the steady growth of the number of people who have died from 1 up to 36. Does that not give you the impression that perhaps even though the, the, the restrictions have been eased, perhaps we should stagger the implementation a little? I, I personally believe that the church is a safer place. Most, most churches that are prepared, it's a safer place than going to the market, even than going to our banks. Because I've seen what happens in the streets. I've seen what happens at the working place. I've gone to banks and I've seen what happens there. With my preparation that I've made, it is far, far better than the market, than the bank, and even whatever you may compare. It is far, far safer. Mm. Reverend Taylor, let me bring you into this conversation. What's your own perspective to this, that the churches are safer because banks are working anyway? Um, uh, some hotels even even work elsewhere. Banks are working, markets are open. He's saying that churches are actually safer places. Indeed, some people have said that the emotional stability that it brings to people is even something that's needed in these times. I would like to comment on the wisdom of our father, uh, Bishop Ransford. Uh, he's a father and a general of God in the kingdom of God. And definitely I'm like a son or a grandson to him. Uh, my opinion is very subjective with respect to the kind of studies I have personally done and uh, the experiential knowledge I have in the States and globally what is happening. Sure, the, the, the church is a safe place. I, I can't contend that. But my persuasion here is we have to educate our people yes. more. Yes. Than, than just opening the church. Yes. Because we we are pastoring people from varied backgrounds and very yes. history city. And yes. you have no idea who is coming that has the virus that can contaminate the whole populace. Yes. So that, that is my subjective sentiment. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Uh, can I come in? Uh, yes, that. Yes. Uh, you know, I don't uh, dispute what you are saying, but yes. uh, not everybody, not every church is fully prepared. That I agree. But mm -hmm. there are some that are fully prepared. In fact, the proposal 
I gave to our regional minister here mm -hmm. and the authorities in Ashanti region. I mm -hmm. told them that they should even give the church two weeks when the president left the party, should give them two weeks to prepare. Mm -hmm. In fact, today I've conducted three seminars at, uh, uh, for pastors. I did three seminars for all pastors in Kumasi. I did one at nine o'clock, one at uh, 10 o'clock, and one at 11 o'clock, and educate them and show them what they are supposed to do. It is, I did that because it's very, very important. But to say that, uh, my, uh, uh, to say that they should not open that one, I have a problem because even when somebody is sick, it has been proven scientifically that even when somebody is sick and they pray for the person, his rate of recovery is, is better and quicker than somebody that nobody prays uh, for. So that is why I personally believe that we should not tackle it only from the scientific part. We should also tackle it from the spiritual aspect. Mm. for people have actually also said that if that's the situation, then we can always do it online as we're doing at the moment, and it's working. So they say, why do no, we... Uh, well, yeah, yeah. My, my, my view is this, and it, the Bible tells us, because our faith, the Bible says one will chase a thousand, and two will chase ten thousand. When we meet together and pray, the power of that prayer is different from individual prayer. That is why the Bible tells us that we should not neglect the uh, coming together. So when we don't meet together, something happens to our faith. Our faith is said that we always have to come together. It is part of our belief. So okay. when we don't meet, something is happening to our faith. So, so let me ask uh, before I, I wrap up this conversation. Do you will you include children in this service? How will you implement it in your church? And you have one hour. Will children be a part of the service? Yes, yes. In fact, my recommendation I gave to the government. I told them that there shouldn't be children's service. I've already told my members, everybody, that there won't be children's service. Um, because children cannot observe those protocols. So I've already made it read. In fact, all the things that I told, I told the, even the government that we shouldn't have a long service. Having one hour service, I don't have a problem. I know some of my colleagues will have a problem, uh, but what I say to them that the Holy Spirit will work within any time you are not for him. So it calls for discipline. You see, we need to understand that church will not be as usual. So we need to uh, come together, pray, and fight uh, this uh, virus, both scientifically and then spiritually. That is my, my stand. So I, we, we, we can't allow children to come to ourselves. So, and most so what churches do we do? even don't have good facilities for children. So what do we do with the children? Do, because their parents will be going to church anyway. What, what, what happens to them? What, what, what we advise is that uh, if the father comes to church today, then following Sunday, the mother comes to church. And what we are doing is that we are providing a pen drive with children program that we will give it to parents, that they will educate their children and have service with them in the, in the evening. In fact, one of the things that I am doing is that I am doing service up we are doing service on saturday we're going to do service on friday we're going to do on saturday and then we'll do on sunday because we cannot do uh, if we want to go by sunday we can't uh, go by the rules that the government has given so we will start on friday have uh, one service on friday on saturday have about uh, four services on on saturday do two in the morning, do two in the evening, and then Sunday, the same thing. So we we, we are not limited to do service. We can even right. start on Wednesday and be doing service <laughs> every day for people to come. <laughs> Very well. Uh, Reverend Ransford, I come yes. to you for your final words. But uh, uh, Pastor Taylor, I'll take your final words. When are you looking to open up? When do you think will be good a time to go back to church? 
we want to look at for the next four weeks just to still get ourselves acclimatized and customized with all the precautionary measures mm. and prepare my members very well. And uh, I believe beyond every reasonable doubt that God will grant us the grace that will sustain us. Uh, whatever like, Daddy said is completely right. He's a father in the kingdom of God, and uh, we should all support what he said. Thank you, Daddy. I think those who are not prepared should not rush like what you are doing. I really respect what you've done, you know. In fact, right now, I'm looking for some clarity. Mm. If the clarity doesn't come, I will even shift uh, this weekend, we will not meet. I will announce for us to meet next week because okay. now there's a uh, people don't know whether it is 100 or it is 25% uh, or this. So the clarity must come. If the clarity doesn't come, I, yes. I have to change my, my, my pattern of services. Yes. So we are yeah. waiting for that. Yes. I'm you. not in a hurry to open church. Yes. Mm. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, uh, these men of God who have just joined us this afternoon. I had uh, Bernard Taylor, Reverend Bernard Taylor. He is the founder of Destiny Empowerment Chapel. He is not opening up his church. He says his church is not ready for, uh, for services at the moment. They're giving themselves at least four weeks to work that out. Thank you. He joined us all, joined us all the way from Atlanta. Pastor Ransford Obeng is also head of the Kumasi Ministers Fellowship. He says uh, he's looking to start uh, next week if they realize that they're not um, completely ready this week. Sir, thank you very much for your time. Okay, thank you.